GNOME 46 is out and as usual it brings in subtle improvements and changes elevating the GNOME experience. Starting with the overall desktop experiences, there are some changes in the shell. Notifications now have a new look, you get the app name, a small icon and the usual details that existed. To be honest, I never really noticed the design of uh, the notifications in GNOME but it does look a lot better right now. They also have this new expandable view option. Maybe the GNOME designers and developers could give attention to the margins which are not really uniform in all the sites. I think the bottom part has more margin than the left part. Uh, would be better if uh, the same amount of margin is implemented over here. Next update after this 46 version would uh, probably bring in notification grouping and then we shall have all the basic features completely. Of course in the notification section. But what you will notice even before the notification is the wallpaper. Nice 3D-like effect. In every release, I feel like the GNOME wallpapers provide a striking contrast with the majority saturation-less grey or, or whitish user experience of GNOME. And this does the same job. The dark variety looks nicer since the lights and the shadows are more noticeable here. What I'm using are custom wallpapers, you can get them on my Patreon page. Uh, if you want to support this channel, do check it out from the description below. Next we have changes in apps, starting with Nautilus. There is a new copy of Move Notifier in Nautilus. The previous one was more compact and you had this small icon at the side which shows uh, how much of the move or copy is done. This new user interface on the other hand takes up a part of the side tab. This approach maximizes the use of space. The sidebar leaves out a bit of space at the bottom by default so why not use it. You will also notice a search icon at the far left of the sidebar. This is actually global search and meant for searching the entire file system. Previously this was accessible through search everywhere button but right now we have the direct access option. Uh, from here. The previous search option gets a new icon on the other hand. It lets you search in the current folder or directory. It also reflects how the GNOME developers actually care about consistency because we have the same search feature at the same location in settings, software center and more. Preferences inside Nautilus has got some updates. Now you get more control over date and time format and change them according to your taste. It also has got this new search option so you can find related settings faster in the preferences pop-up. Nautilus now stops and warns you if you try to move a file to fat partitions with a size of more than 4 GB. Previously if you try to move it, it would just stop moving midway after the 4 GB limit was reached which was super annoying. Pathbar now has a single click option to edit location which makes more sense, wasn't the case in the previous version. Password protected zip creation UI now asks you to enter the password twice. Previously there was a slight delay when you tried to change the list view to grid view or back to list view in the file manager, right now you don't have that delay anymore. It it changes instantly. And there are some minor tweaks done in the animation part of the start files. When you unstar it, the animation now reverses instead of the color just disappearing away. Overall, small additions which enhance the user experiences. I won't even call them additions, it's more like moving things around um, with small design changes. Okay, next we have the settings page. There is this new system menu. The information is better grouped now in this page, but at the same time, there are now more clicks to just see the version of GNOME that you're running. There are also other important stuff that you get on this page, like integration of remote desktop, SSH, and even some user-related data. Apps tab has got an UI revamp. Uh, previously, you used to get this, which replaced the sidebar with the app list. Now the app list is visible in the main page. There is also a new default apps page here. It combines two different pages, that is the default apps page and the removable media page. Online accounts page has some changes. Previously you could log into your account from here itself. Now it launches the browser instead in order to log in. The UI was also outdated for these and they have been modernized too. Privacy tab is now privacy and security. It is moved down and grouped along with the system and accessibility tab. They have actually done quite a bit of re in the tab position. The groupings are also changed now, like the displays tab is moved and grouped along with the appearance tab. Uh, a lot of these subtle changes are there inside the settings. Personally, I don't care about these since GNOME has this search option in the settings app. I always use the GNOME search inside settings in order to get a settings page. 
So these don't really make much of a difference for me. Okay, some general design changes which I forgot to mention. Some apps have got subtle UI updates. There's a really clean about page animation which looks a lot better than the one in the previous version. Uh, looks like this, it extends to a lot of the other elements like inside the calendar for example, the add event page which also gets the same animation. It also opens up taking the same space the app is taking instead of consuming much more like in the previous version. Uh, the same goes for the compact mode, it's better designed for mobile devices. The new event page now pops up from the bottom bar instead of, again, taking up too much of the screen. The same goes for the about page. And it's seamless, like if you increase the app size, it converts back to the pop-up version. I love this responsive design, it really elevates the GNOME experience, making you think that the GNOME designers and developers do actually care about the little things in the user interface. Evolve is also trying to get there, but it's far from perfect, moreover the UI isn't the focus as of now. Of course, these are not just calendar related and they will be implemented elsewhere too, like we have it already inside the text editor and the music app too. Certain apps don't have it yet, like the GNOME settings and the Nautilus 2, which is our file manager. The GNOME software looks better now, the header bar gets the seamless modern look and the title of the app page is centered properly now. There's also a new minimum app window size. Slight differences there, the previous version allowed the window to be narrower, making the grid view converted to a list view. This, however, isn't possible in the latest release of GNOME software. Inside individual apps pages, safety check now includes a new check for the microphone access, which now actually marks safe apps as probably safe, like in this app, Blanket, both are from the same version, but GNOME 46 marks it as probably safe since it requires microphone access. Look how Dolphin is potentially marked as unsafe and Nautilus is marked as completely safe and reliable. I don't really find this portion useful, um, so comment your views down below what you think about uh, the GNOME software commenting on the security of application. Sure, it gives you the list of all the permissions that the app is going to require. So I think it is helpful in some way. Okay, menus have a new entry, which is the keyboard shortcuts page containing some handy information related to keyboard shortcuts. These shortcuts are newly implemented. They do not work on the previous version of GNOME software. The preferences page got some updates. You get some more option and information is better displayed through different groupings. There's a new neat info button, which now contains the grayed out message which used to be shown like this previously. The clock app got some font changes and inside the timer section, set duration is now changed to quick start. Previously you had to manually start after setting the preset timer from here. Um, but now it starts automatically. Maps also got these new zoom icons which look like a nice change and the actual map now looks very sharp compared to the slightly blurred previous version. It's probably rendered in a different way now. Next, the sign-in page has been updated, looks more modern and minimal. The favorites option previously used to be grayed out by default, but now it shows what the option is meant to do when you click on it, even if you don't have any favorites saved. Also, there is this new experimental map. It looks like this. The interesting part is it respects light or dark mode and also looks more modern. It's such a nice implementation. It looks very neat. The music app is in GTK4 and has the changed animation and look extended to the preferences page too. Okay, calculator has got this new plus minus button in the preferences page for the trailing decimals option. The widget now looks like a text box itself which was previously restricted to the small space. For me the previous design looks much better and makes more sense. The weeks are now marked separately in the calendar. It now separates them out more than the one we had in the previous edition. Uh, next, contacts has a new link option in the multiple selections page. System monitor which has been ported to GTK4. Again, the obvious design changes along with a changed interface for searching the open file section. Videos did not receive the GTK4 update yet there are some changes in the preferences section. It looks nicer and more serious with four dedicated tabs and different sections in the main view. The same goes for the disks which didn't get GTK4 but there are a lot of UI changes in the main view which makes it look quite nice. But I don't really know if these are additions in GNOME 46 or not because of some version mismatch and match like in videos whose version is 43 in Fedora 39 running GNOME 45 Fedora 40 running GNOME 46 as well as GNOME OS Nightly which is running GNOME 46 again. But the one in GNOME 46 on GNOME OS Nightly has got some changes while the one in Fedora doesn't have them. 
whether it is in the 45 or the 46 version of GNOME. GNOME Disk Utility makes it even weirder, with the version number in Fedora 39 being 45.1, while the one in GNOME OS Nightly is 44 which shouldn't be the case. The latest version available on their page is the 46th version of GNOME Discs and the same version is shipped by Fedora 40 but it does not have any UI changes. These might be UI changes specific to GNOME OS Nightly but I don't have any idea as of now. Do comment down below if you know what is happening. Okay, now let's talk about the issues. GNOME 46 is in RC right now and when I post this video, it's probably released. So I'll cross check and let you know in the description when any of these problems are solved and when they are changed. And these are not even just problems, these are just the issues I've faced. There's a new GTK4 version in use which has a bit more defined variables for a particular theme which may cause your older themes to look weird like in this case the installation of Everforest GTK on GTK4 apps look weird and the same goes for the shell. The shell issue is prevalent in other shell themes too. Clearly a new variable has been uh, defined which isn't uh, defined in the GNOME shell uh, theme that I'm using. So if I create a modifiable copy of the shell theme from Evolve and edit the colors with the hex code uh, that happens to be 3D, 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 let us replace it with something weird like blue so it becomes noticeable. And as you can see, it works. This isn't an issue in GNOME itself, but it's a problem so you might face after switching to GNOME 46. The calendar UI gets jumbled up at some point when the window size is very small. It also exists in the previous release, which is not fixed yet. Inconsistent animations are there like I mentioned before and even some inconsistent GTK4 for designs in the user interface, although they are not that much noticeable like in the case of GTK 3 and 4 inconsistencies, which has been going on for quite some time. The favorites part in maps could have been improved a bit with the padding and design, and the main container size which opens up in the favorites window is actually made smaller, especially in this case when it is completely blank. So it has a weird scroll bar which is unnecessary. And finally the GNOME Tweaks app which has been ported to GTK4 doesn't launch properly. If it launches I'm going to put the image over here and show it to you how it looks like. But as of now it is not launching properly and even if you open it with the terminal you see all these errors that are coming up. So the entirety of GNOME looks very modern, clean, feels fast and efficient, it is very smooth. GNOME 46 like every other release of GNOME is not a really big release. There are just subtle improvements which enhance your overall experience in GNOME. So that is all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Do like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.